Welcome everybody and thank you for joining today's presentation, which is Designing PIX Plumbing Systems to Optimize Performance and Efficiency, Part 2. Part 1 of this presentation was given in July, um, so this is the follow-up part of this presentation. This is an ASPE CEU uh, accredited presentation. The recording of this webinar is going to be shared on LinkedIn next week and will also be posted to a PPI Building and Construction Division webpage called Education slash Recorded Presentations. The link to get started there is shown here. And then a copy of these slides is already posted to the PPI Building and Construction Division webpage called Education slash Presentation Slide Decks. A uh, quick introduction in terms of um, who am I? I am Lance McNevin. I'm the Director of Engineering for the Plastic Pipe Institute's Building and Construction Division. And as a staff engineer, I get involved with coordinating research and publications, education like this, advocacy, and various types of outreach that we do with other associations and other groups. I've been involved with the plastic piping industry since 1993. Um, and a good part of my job is I get to serve on technical committees within um, some fantastic organizations across North America, um, focusing on development of standards and codes and research and uh, handbooks and test methods and things like this. So um, it's a great part of the job being involved with these organizations and I recommend that you have the time to join the type of association that's most relevant to your job as well and, and get involved. The more you can get involved, the more you will learn. The Plastics Pipe Institute is a nonprofit trade association serving North America and based in Irving, Texas. PPI was formed in 1950 to research and develop test methods for the early versions of plastic pressure pipes. Um, so that's more than 70 years ago. So PPI is more than 70 years old and plastic piping systems have been around for well more than 70 years. But PPI has always been part of this industry helping to you know, improve the science and do education and things like this as well. PPI is supported by over 170 member firms involved with the plastic pipe industry in North America. And our website is simply plasticpipe.org. Within PPI, we have five divisions, the Building and Construction Division, or BCD, is the one that focuses on plastic pressure pipe and tubing systems used within buildings and on building premises for applications such as plumbing, water service, fire protection, hydronics, snow and ice melting, district heating and cooling, and ground source geothermal piping systems, and some other applications as well. We represent a collection of pressure pipe materials, including PEX, which is gonna be the focus of today's presentation, of course. And to get directly to the building and construction division of PPI, simply go to the webpage, plasticpipe.org slash building construction. Before we get into the course introduction, we want to ask a little bit about our audience today. So I have our first poll question that I'm gonna get started. And this is really just asking you all to kind of identify who you are. Okay, let's close this poll and share the results. Um, so it looks we have uh, our audience has broken up mostly two thirds plumbing component manufacturers. You may actually be members of PPI, if so, welcome. 22% are plumbing engineers, mechanical engineers, welcome. And 11 people are in the category of plumbing installers and contractors, welcome to you as well. Thank you everybody for joining. So yeah, the official course introduction, uh, and we use the same course introduction for part one of this webinar back in July 27th. And what it says is, as a result of modern polymer technology, PEX tubing performs in ways that provides superior reliability, durability, and safety. PEX tubing has been used for plumbing systems in North America for over 25 years, providing safe delivery of potable water and protecting the health of building occupants. PEX systems are well established for residential applications and are being adopted for multifamily and large commercial plumbing applications. Usage in those large commercial plumbing applications is growing every year. So it's uh, the, the, the onus is on us to provide more and more education for people that are trying PEX for the first time. So part two of this course is gonna demonstrate how to size and design PEX plumbing systems to optimize performance and efficiency for reliable delivery of clean drinking water. That's obviously the point. Uh, this graph here, we showed this in part one of the presentation. In terms of residential usage, it looks like PEX tubing is now used in more than 60% of all new home construction across the United States. And this data is coming to us from the uh, Home Innovation Research Lab at Builders Practices Report from September 2021. So this is two year old data now, but um, even as of two years ago, yeah, more than 60% of older homes are using PEX for plumbing. So it's well adopted. Um, also, we should point out that a lot of the information in today's presentation is already found in this publication, 
which is available for free on our website, or you can purchase a paper copy from Amazon or from our website if you like to have it as, a, as an actual full color book. Uh, but the, the guide is called a Design Guide for Residential PEX Water Supply Plumbing Systems. And this was a joint venture between PPI, Plastic Pipe and Fitting Association, and International Code Council that all collaborated to work on this document, working with Home Innovation Research Labs, who are the official authors of the document. So it's available as a free download from our website, and you can also download it from homeinnovation.com. In today's presentation, we're also going to be talking about the use of the PPI Plastic Pipe Design Calculator, which is a free online pipe sizing tool that can also do other calculations as well. As you can see here, it does six different calculations at the present time, and new calculation types or functions are typically added to the calculator every year. This was first launched in 2015, and it can be used for PEX, CPVC, high-density polyethylene, PERT, and polypropylene piping systems. Reasons to select PEX plumbing systems. If you're new to PEX, um, in part one, we went through this long list of uh, advantages of PEX plumbing systems as compared to traditional metal piping systems. So I'm not going to do this again because we did this before. And in the previous presentation, part one, we also talked about all the sustainability benefits of PEX plumbing systems. And that's pretty important because that's uh, more and more of a focus uh, as time goes on, circularity, sustainability environmental responsibility, managing, basically managing the resources of the earth in an optimal way. And PEX plumbing systems and piping systems in general really help with that a lot. And in fact, there is a peer-reviewed published life cycle analysis that compares PEX versus copper. Uh, this has been published by TEFA, the European Plastic Pipe and Fitting Association, but the author's independent information is shown here. And you can see when they compare PEX to copper for the seven environmental impact criteria required in an LCA, PEX is far superior in all seven of those criteria. So uh, no matter which type of sustainability aspect you're concerned with, PEX is gonna be optimizing the Earth's resources and delivering the best uh, value and the best benefit and best for the planet overall. So let's get into our actual learning objectives for today. And this full course, which could be a full two hours, uh, has a total of six learning objectives. The first three of these are kind of grayed out because we did them in part one back in July 27th, which that presentation is recorded and is on our website, like I said. But today we're going to be focusing on learning objectives four, five, and six. Number four is what we're going to do there is describe three distinct plumbing layouts using PEC systems and compare the advantages and disadvantages of each. That's going to be pretty quick. And then in part number five, that's the main meat of this presentation, where we're going to be talking about test data from public research, published research, and how that addresses everything from pipe sizing, volume, um, water stagnation, pressure loss, flow rates, making sure we're delivering enough pressure and flow delivery to various fixtures with various sizes of PEX. And that'll kind of help give us guidance in terms of optimizing our designs and uh, choosing what diameters of pipes to use and things like that. It's also going to talk about benefits such as improving water stagnation and reducing hot water waste or reducing water waste when you're waiting for hot water, which is really what we're focused on there. And then learning objective six is going to focus on how to access industry resources for additional material design and installation information. And most of those material resources are from the Plastics Pipe Institute, but we'll show you how to find that on their website. So then let's begin with learning objective number four which is focusing on plumbing layouts using PEX tubing. And one of the great things is because PEX is flexible and comes on long coil lengths most of the time, it gives the installer, the plumber, and the designer lots of options and opportunities for different ways of laying out the plumbing pipe throughout a house or a commercial building. You could also do all of these different layouts with copper as well or rigid piping materials, but it probably wouldn't be as efficient or work as well because PEX tubing, we get to take the advantage of the fact that it's coming in coils and long lengths. So the three layout options we're going to be talking about are known as trunk and branch, which is traditional plumbing layout, parallel pipe systems, also known as home run plumbing, and zone systems, which typically utilize remote manifolds or multi-port T's. And the three images on the bottom here are the exact same house, but if you can look closely, you'll see the hot and cold plumbing pipes in those houses. It's three different plumbing layouts for the exact same house. So we're going to use the same typical four bedroom, or three bath house and compare the plumbing layouts of that house in this learning objective. So first of all, trunk and branch, that's how people have been plumbing for many, many years, whether it was with galvanized steel or copper 
or CPVC or other piping materials, you can do the exact same type of plumbing layouts with PEX. It works just as well. PEX is available in coils and in straight lengths, and manufacturers of PEX produce all different types of reducing tees, uh, elbows, drop your elbows for the shower head. So you can build any type of plumbing system with existing PEX components that you can purchase from many different manufacturers. So this is a very familiar technique. What we do recommend is that if people are doing trunk and branch plumbing, that instead of using manufactured elbows made of brass or bronze or, or plastic, just try to eliminate those elbows by simply bending the PEX tubing into sweeps. And that will really help a lot. It reduces pressure loss and saves installation time and saves cost. So we'll give demonstrations of that in a few minutes here. Good thing is also with PEX tubing, if you are doing traditional trunk and branch with PEX, it's probably going to be faster than if you were plumbing with copper because the joining systems that we use with PEX tubing that we covered in the first part of this presentation in July are really fast. And many times a third of the time or a quarter of the time of what it would take to do copper sweat fittings. Uh, so that's a big advantage right there. One of the good things about trunk and branch plumbing is it's easy to accommodate hot water recirculation because you can take a return line from the farthest hot water fixture and run that back to your hot water device. So that is one great advantage of trunk and branch right there. And trunk and branch typically uses the least amount of pipe within a house. So that means the least amount of holes being drilled and things like that when you're building these systems. PEX tubing is typically available in diameters up to copper tube size three. So you can build some very large plumbing systems uh, with PEC tubing systems. And then the drops are normally in much smaller diameters like three eighths, half or uh, three quarter. So yeah, if you are a fan of trunk and branch, it works very, very well with, with PEX plumbing systems. And it's commonly used in residential, not so much nowadays in residential, but definitely in commercial plumbing systems where you're dealing with large diameter pipes where the flexibility of PEX isn't as much of an advantage. Now, you could kind of think of um, parallel pipe systems, also known as home run, is kind of the opposite of trunk and branch because the premise behind a parallel pipe system is that you start with a central manifold, or actually two central manifolds, one with hot water pipe feeding in, into it and one with cold water feeding into it. And from those central manifolds, you branch off with individual runs using small diameter tubing, like 3.8 or half diameter tubing, uh, run directly to each fixture throughout a, throughout a house or a building. And this could also be used in commercial applications like an apartment building or a hotel or condos, things like that as well. Although some of our images here are residentially focused. So the tubing is connected to the central manifolds. And one of the big advantages, uh, if you're just running the same diameter tubing to every fixture, you don't have to worry so much about pressure issues or flow issues if uh, two things are going at the same time because each individual fixture gets its own direct pipe in its own flow. So, uh, so using the shower won't affect the amount of water available to a sink nearby or something like that. Typically with, the, with these systems, there are no fittings involved with the wall uh, or involved inside the wall because we're dealing with small diameter branches. Everything is a branch, essentially. In many cases, it can be done with a 3 8 tubing, which is extremely flexible. But even if you're dealing with half inch uh, tubing, it's extremely flexible as well. And uh, you can just bend it to follow the contours of the, of the layout without having to use a lot of fittings. So that is a big advantage there. And here's a couple of images of um, parallel piping systems in practice. The next uh, layout that we talk about then is called zoned systems. And these zoned systems typically use remote manifolds or multi-port T's at various bathroom groups or other fixture groups like uh, in a kitchen or something like that. So the idea with a zone system, it's kind of a hybrid between the first two, is we run a trunk line throughout the building. So maybe you run a three quarter line or a one inch line up towards a bathroom group. But then instead of having three different T's with branches, you could just have one manifold and take a branch line off that manifold or off a multi-port T to supply all the fixtures in that bathroom. And then in a lot of cases, the manifold is available with an outlet on the opposite end. So you can put another pipe in the opposite end of the manifold and then go to another manifold, maybe 10 or 20 feet away for a different bathroom group or fixture group. So um, a lot of advantages, like I said, it's really kind of a hybrid of the first two systems. And in a lot of cases, these systems are using the least amount of fittings, not the least amount compared to parallel, but using less fittings compared to trunk and branch, but then also using less pipe compared to parallel plumbing, uh, which also means fewer penetrations through the wall uh, to run all those pipes and things like that. And one of the other good advantage, advantages is uh, you can often pull 
pull a branch off the farthest hot water manifold as your return line for domestic hot water recirc. So this does lend itself well to hot water recirculation. And the manifolds that we're talking about in these systems are uh, without valves. So typically these manifolds don't need an access hatch or anything like that. They don't have to be accessible. Just think of them as multi-port T's, again, embedded inside the walls. So here's a little bit of comments and some advice on each one of these things. On the trunk and branch, our comments are, although PEX tubing works well in a traditional trunk and branch layout and is very appropriate for commercial installations, it can be a slower installation technique for residential housing as compared to the zone system. So the zone system could save time because it has the overall the least amount of um, pipes and fittings. So experienced plumbers may reduce installation time and or materials by using one of the other techniques. So trunk and branch systems are ideal for a lot of designs, especially when you're dealing with larger diameter tubing where the flexibility of the tubing is not really that much of, a, of an advantage. If you're dealing with one and a half inch diameter tubing, you're not really bending that to eliminate elbows. You're probably using actual metal or, or uh, plastic elbows if you're dealing with one and a half inch. So uh, trunk and branch has its advantages, but mostly involved with larger diameter tubing. Here's an image here. And if you are building a trunk and branch system, according to the picture at the top, as you can see, there's lots and lots of different fittings available to pick from. So you can build any kind of a plumbing system with various elbows and T's and uh, other kinds of adapters as well. On parallel systems, some general comments on parallel systems. And again, here's the image of that same house now run with home run plumbing. And as you can see, there's a lot of pipes in the house, not a lot of fittings, but a lot of individual pipes there. And the downside of this is you have to drill holes in a lot of cases to put all those pipes. So this can be extra work to make space or pathways for all these pipes to fit in. Now, one of the big advantages of parallel systems is you get faster delivery of hot water to individual fixtures because to flush a half inch line uses a lot less water than to flush a three quarter line. And when you turn on a faucet or turn on a shower, keep in mind that the faucet or the shower itself is typically a flow limiting device whether it's 1.5 GPM or 2.2 GPM, that's all the flow you're going to get to that, whether it's supplied by a half inch pipe or a three quarter pipe. So if you have a three quarter pipe going to the bathroom group and you turn on the shower and you're waiting for hot water, you have to flush out that whole three quarter pipe full of water as compared to if you had a half inch pipe running directly to that shower, it would be a lot less water to flush out before you get hot water. So that's one of the big advantages of parallel systems is faster delivery of hot water in that case. Although it also, it also mentions here that delivery time for sequential hot water has no advantage over trunk and branch. And what that means is, let's say in the bathroom, you have two faucets and a shower and a tub. Well, if you run trunk and branch or zone system to the bathroom and you turn on hot water and you get hot water to the sink, then you've already got hot water in the trunk line supplying the bathroom. So then when you go turn on the shower, the sequential use, they're going to get hot water much faster. If it was parallel plumbing going to the bathroom, and you flush out the water and you get hot water at the sink, then you go turn on the shower, you also have to flush that line as well. So if you're doing a lot of sequential use, which first one sink, then the other sink, and then the shower, the trunk and branch with the zone system are actually gonna give you overall faster delivery of hot water. Here's another picture here of a very large home run plumbing system, this image in the lower right. And the image at the top, I should point out, is a combination of manifolds, but some of those manifolds actually have valves built in. So if they're installed in a central area, like where the water heater is, it means you actually have a built-in shutoff valve for each of the runs going to all the different lines throughout the building. And then here's another image here of a home run plumbing system. But as you can see, this is a large system with a lot of individual pipes uh, and a lot of individual holes that have to be drilled through to accommodate all these pipes. So it may have been more optimal overall to actually have used trunk and branch or zone system or some sort of a hybrid uh, version of those in a large house like this with so many pipes. Um, so let's get to the zone system, some comments on zone systems, and then the images across the top are actual different versions of manifolds and multi-port T's. Some of them have connections on both ends, uh, so the water can flow right on through and you drop off several branches. So they're available in all kinds of different configurations. So the zone technique can reduce the total amount of tubing as compared with parallel and reduce the number of fittings as compared with trunk and branch and reduce the overall installation time because it's really a bit of a hybrid and allows you to kind of optimize the design. With the zone system, uh, the delivery time for sequential hot water is reduced. So just like with trunk and branch, once you've 
flush the trunk line going to a bathroom and you have hot water in the trunk line, then for the adjacent fixtures or faucets, uh, you'll get faster delivery of hot water there. So that's actually better than, than parallel. And these zone systems really are, uh, like I said, very adaptable and flexible. Now, to help compare these different systems and the advantages of each of them for the different types of layouts, within the PEX Plumbing Design Guide, Table 7.1 includes, well, seven, Table 7.1 is shown here. And what it is, is a bit of a rating system based on stars. So one star is good, two stars is better, and three stars is best. So the way this is organized, if, uh, if you go down the rows, the first question is minimize pipe used. That's your priority to select a system that uses the least amount of pipe. We can see the trunk and branch gets three stars, zoned gets two stars, and parallel gets only one. On the other hand, if your priority is to minimize the amount of fittings and joints, then the parallel system gets three stars and trunk and branch only gets one because it uses the most amount of fittings and joints. If your priority is for faster sequential hot water delivery time, both trunk and branch and zone do great in that one, and parallel is the least good on that one. But if your focus is to minimize hot water waste time for a single fixture, then parallel uh, will perform best that way. So you can use this table to kind of decide what is most important to me when it comes to selecting the best, best system overall. There isn't just one right answer for all cases. It really depends on the, the nature of the plumbing layout, uh, where the fixtures are, and what the priorities of uh, this building are going to be. And that wraps up this learning objective, which was really introducing these three different types of plumbing layouts. And again, it's not always exactly just one of these three uh, because there are different types of hybrid versions available. But next, as we move on to the next learning objective, we're going to talk about how we can optimize our designs. But before we do that, I have another poll question I'm going to open. And poll question number two is about, have you designed, launched, installed, or specified PEX plumbing systems in the past? And let me close the poll and share the responses. So based on our responses, and thanks everybody for, for responding, we've got 30% saying yes frequently, I use PEX plumbing, 30% saying yes occasionally, and 40% no, not yet. So let's hide that and then move into our next learning objective, which is on optimizing piping designs. And we're going to be talking about a lot of different things in this learning objective. But one of the things we're going to do is compare those three different layout options for four types of residences. And this information is all in uh, the PEX plumbing design guide that we looked at a few minutes ago. And the four different residences which are compared are known as the Colonial, which is a 2,000 square foot house with a basement two full baths, the ranch house, which is 1,300 square feet with one story and two full baths, a townhouse, which is 1,000 square feet on three levels with one full bath and a half bath, and then a condo, which is 1,200 square feet on one level with two full baths. What we're going to see as we get through this is how each of those three different layouts compares for those four different types of structures. But before we get into that, we're also going to provide some general comments about optimizing your piping designs. And this applies to whether you're using PEX or other materials as well. So when we're focusing on hot water plumbing, and we're talking a lot about hot water plumbing because it uses a lot of energy to make hot water, the primary goals of hot water plumbing design, we've got five goals shown here. Number one, deliver hot water quickly for customer happiness. That time standing waiting for the hot water to show up to the faucet is not a fun time. Wasting time and wasting water as you flush out the cold water. So number two, where we want to waste the least amount of water while getting hot water to the outlets because water is energy and water is life, and so we don't want to waste it. Number three, ensure the water is safe and free from harmful pathogens. And the way we can do that in design is uh, we want to design systems that have the least amount of stagnation. Stagnation is bad because it means you have old water in the pipes, which can allow biofilm to, to grow and build up because your disinfectants have decayed. Disinfectants like chlorine decay over time and after a certain amount of time, there's probably no disinfectant left in the water. And if there's microbes or pathogens in the water, like Legionella, then those things can start to grow if the water has been stagnant for a long time, and especially at the wrong temperature. So actually avoiding stagnation is an important part of design. We also don't want to waste energy in transporting the hot water. So that means we want to control the pressure loss and reduce the pressure loss. So you're not losing too much pressure through the piping system. And you don't want to waste cost and unnecessary materials. So you want to have an efficient design that makes the best use of materials so that you're not spending too much money in installation time and materials. So here are five methods to help achieve these goals. Number one is to route hot water piping closer to the outlets to minimize the distance. 
So this means less pipe if we have a good architectural layout design. Number two is that smaller diameter pipes hold less water and therefore there's less stagnation because there's less old water in the pipe and it's quicker to flush the old water out when you open a fixture. Faster water velocity actually pushes out the cold water faster. So when you're turning on a faucet or a shower and you're waiting for hot water, the faster the velocity is in that pipe, the faster the hot water will push all the cold water out. And so in that case, actually a pipe with a smaller inside diameter is better towards flushing the lines. Plastic pipe is lower thermal conductivity. So that's a good thing because there's less heat loss through the pipe wall. So that helps to keep the hot water hot and the cold water cold. And then finally, PEX plumbing systems are going to save costs in both material and in labor, which helps to achieve goal number five. So here's some other plumbing design tips that we can say. Number one, we, we can group fixtures together in a common location, such as stacking bathrooms where possible, again, to reduce the length of pipes. Having less pipe in the house means less water, less stagnant water, and quicker pathways to deliver that water, especially when you're waiting for hot water. So point two here says route hot water piping closer to the fixtures and using recirculation at proper times to precharge the pipes. We're not necessarily a big fan of 24-7 recirculation for residential systems because that's also wasting energy on pumps. But if you can have timed recirculation systems to flush the lines with hot water before you actually are opening the faucet, that can save a lot of water. If you're parallel piping, you can group the pipes together, as you see in the picture here. The blue pipes are cold water, the red pipes are hot water, and you can easily group them together, and that actually helps to save energy and conserve uh, temperature within the pipes. But then in a lot of cases, you may want to insulate the pipes, especially if the pipes are passing through a cold wall, which you shouldn't do, or an attic, or under a crawl space, or something like that. And definitely with domestic hot water research lines, you want to be insulating those. On the pressure side of things, let's take a look at some direct dimensional comparisons of copper versus PEX the inside diameters. I've got a typo there. That should just say, say inside diameters. Um, for the most common pipe sizes from 3.8 up to 2, what we've listed here are the actual inside diameters according to the material standards. And for copper, we're using type L. And for PEX tubing, we're using SDR9, which is the norm. And then we compare the inside diameter. And what the comparison is, is how does the PEX inside diameter compare with the copper? And the PEX inside diameter is slightly less. In the case of half-inch PEX, uh, PEX is 87% of the inside diameter of copper. For three-quarter, it's 85%, and for one inch, it's 84%. We promote these as benefits of the PEX because it means you'll get faster velocity through the pipe, and there's less water being stored in the pipes, which means less stagnation. So these are, these are good things. But for, for optimizing pressure supply to all our fixtures through a building, here's some other advantages of PEX. Number one, we can eliminate most fittings and elbows by using pecs and coils. You don't have to buy the 20 foot straight lengths and plumb pecs with lots of elbows and fittings just like you would with copper or, or other rigid piping systems. You can simply buy it on coils, whether it's 100 foot coils or 300 foot coils or 1000 foot coils, and then just pull continuous lengths of pipe as much as possible with the least amount of couplings and other fittings. So that makes things more efficient. And then when it comes to changes of direction, all these images here are showing bending the tubing using sweeps, metal or plastic sweeps that just snap on the outside of the tubing. Putting it into a 90 degree sweep direction will change, but without actually having to use a fitting. So this saves installation time because it takes just seconds to snap a sweep over the PEX tubing, but it also reduces pressure loss because there's really negligible pressure loss in these sweeps. And that's been measured and published by uh, Gary Klein at various presentations he's done, where he's actually measured the pressure loss of sweeps through elbows and there's no contest. The pressure loss through sweeps is um, very close to nothing. So big advantage there. Now, when it comes time to do the specific pressure loss calculations through PEX piping systems, we recommend that you use the PPI plastic pipe design calculator that we showed before. And this is as easy as it is to do a pressure loss calculation through PEX tubing. When you open up the calculator, you hit the pressure loss button, you select your pipe tubing material, which is PEX, it's copper tube size PEX, you select that, and then the nominal pipe or tubing size, which would be one in this case, that's what I put for my example. Down below, you can enter in your flow rate, the length of the pipe, the fluid, in this case for plumbing, it's gonna be 100% water, and the average fluid temperature for a hot water line that should be about 125 degrees in commercial plumbing, uh, less than that residentially. And then once you hit the calculate button, you'll get the results. So this big image on the left-hand side actually shows us what the results are for this specific calculation there would be 5.5 PSI pressure loss in the 100 foot run of PEX with 10 gallon a minute of hot water flowing through it. 
So that's not very much. Uh, that's a very low pressure drop. And then if you look at the velocity of that, that water through the pipe, that works out to about 5.5 feet per second, which is a good uh, rigorous velocity, if you will, to um, uh, make sure we're flushing old water out of the pipe quickly. Now, on the volume side, we've talked about volumes. Let's look at some direct volume comparisons. And again, this is going to be comparing type L copper with regular PEX tubing. And based on the dimensions that we looked at before, this table here actually shows you the volume in U.S. gallons per 100 feet of tubing. So I've got the row for copper tube size one, uh, one inch tubing highlighted here or in bold. And what the example is that if we look at 100 feet of NTS nominal tubing size one tubing, X has 29% less water than copper does, which is 1.25 gallons less in the 100 foot long piece of pipe. So that means when you're turning hot water, there's less water to flush and you'll get hot water faster, and but it also means there's a lot less water in the pipe to go stagnant over time. So that does help to improve water quality. And then in this second example, now we're looking at a branch line, just 10 feet of half-inch tubing. And even then, the half-inch tubing, the PEX has 24% less water, which doesn't look like a lot of volume. It's just four fluid ounces in there. But every time that 10-foot branch is flushed, there's four fluid ounces saved because there was less old water in the PEX tubing as compared with the copper. So again, this can help to reduce the wait time for hot water delivery when you're dealing with the PEX system. So that's really an advantage. And you can actually use the PPI calculator to calculate the volume in the pipes as well. As we see here, if you just go to the pipe weight volume function in the calculator, uh, in this example, we've selected three-quarter PEX tubing, a 60-foot length of the tubing. And once you hit the calculate button, it'll tell you that there's going to be 1.1 gallons of, of fluid in that tubing. So if you want to check the volume of your systems to minimize it, the calculator will help you there. So that's um, some overall design theory stuff. Now let's take a look at how the design guide compared the three layout options for the four types of residences that we mentioned before. We're not going to show every comparison, but we're going to teach you how to use the guide to find these comparisons and to, to use them effectively. So first of all, the colonial house uh, is drawn here. It's a 2,000 square foot house with a basement, uh, but there's really just two levels of plumbing and it has two full baths. So that's the house on the left. And then what you see in the right-hand side is the exact same piping drying done to scale with a fairly centralized hot water heater. So it's a fairly efficient piping design, but as we can see, our bathrooms and our washing machine and stuff like that is still spread out. So that's how this guide starts, is by saying, here is the plumbing design for this typical layout in the house. But now it also takes the same house and does a, par a parallel plumbing design. So in this image here, you can see it's the exact same house, but if you're doing every fixture or faucet with its own independent line, that's represented by all the red and blue lines in this drawing. And then if you're doing zoned plumbing, uh, it's the exact same house with the exact same fixtures in the same locations, but now plumbed via zoned plumbing. So a different drawing again on the right-hand side. Now, why did we do this? Because what the designers of this guide did is they compared the amount of pipes and fittings for each of these three layouts for this house. So in table 7.4 of the guide, we can see the material summary for the colonial house. And in the table down below, we have our rows for the trunk or branch plumbing, the parallel and the zone plumbing. And then it shows you exactly how much feet of pipe is required for each and exactly how many fittings and joints would be required for each. And there's a pretty big difference. For the trunk and branch, there's going to be a total of 97 joints. For the parallel, a total of 49. And those are at the terminals at the end of each fit pipe. And for zone, it would be a total of 83 joints. But if you actually added up all the amount of pipe in each one, you'll see that parallel plumbing is gonna have about 438 feet of pipe on the hot water side, a lot more on the cold water side because we're also supplying toilets and hose bibs on the cold water side. So it's about 1200 feet of pipe for parallel, but trunk and branch, it's only about, uh, what do we got there? About 250 feet of pipe. And on the zone side, it's about 300 feet of pipe. So you can use this table to do these comparisons quite quickly. There's a ranch layout that is also evaluated in the design guide. We don't have a drawing of the ranch house, but it looks like this image here. And those are the three piping drawings for the ranch house that were compared in the design guide. And there's a table there, table 7.6 is the material summary for the ranch house that uses the exact same theory. Uh, the plumbing system is drawn to scale. And those are the exact same counts of pipes and joints and fittings. 
for the townhouse, exact same thing has been done. Table 7.8 is for the townhouse, which was drawn to scale, and a condo, which is also representative of apartments and hotel rooms and things like that, uh, was also evaluated in the same way in Table 7.10. So the guide is really helpful towards allowing you to look at different types of construction and deciding you know, the amount of pipe and fitting usage for those different layouts. Believe it or not, there was also performance testing done on those different layouts for the theoretical house. And this testing was done years ago at the lab known as the NAHB Research Center, which is now known as Home Innovation Research Lab, or HIRL, in Maryland. And what they did, and they did this as a research project, is they simulated plumbing for a full house to scale inside their laboratory, a multi-story house, and they plumbed the same house three different ways using trunk and branch, parallel, and zoned. And then they actually opened the fixtures using solenoids to open all these various remote fixtures at the faucets and flush the toilet and things like that to compare delivery of water, delivery of hot water, pressure, flow rates, and things like that. So the exact same house was plumbed three different ways. And we don't have time to get into all the details of that today, but I just want to introduce the fact that this testing was done and this data is available. So here you can see some photographs of actually how they plumbed the house to scale going up the wall inside the laboratory. They didn't actually build the house, they just used some steel framing to actually support the piping as if the house was built inside the laboratory. But this is pretty serious work and you can see the hot water tank in the left corner of the right hand image there. And here's what they found and this information is actually in chapter seven of the design guide. So I've just got this one section underlined here. It says results of this testing indicate that all three systems will supply adequate pressure and water delivery to the remote shower fixture located 100 feet from the base riser with an elevation head of 15 feet. So in other words, in a worst case scenario, the question was, will PEX deliver adequate flow rates? And the answer was yes, definitively yes. And in fact, base source pressures of 40, 60, and 80 PSI were used. So even if you had only 40 PSI of pressure coming into the house, um, you would still get adequate flow and adequate pressure at the farthest fixture, which in this case was 100 feet away. So you'll find that kind of data in the guide. They also compared then the exact pressures and flows in various graphs like this one here. And in this graph here, you see all kinds of different simultaneous uses. So the question was, what if it's not just a shower flowing? What if it's a shower and laboratory and somebody flushes a toilet? and we're also running the washing machine at the same time. So these graphs here showed the exact pressure drop that occurs in those various situations, but with simultaneous flows. So this was really a hard test with very realistic scenarios happening. And in fact, the simultaneity here probably never really occurs in real life, but it was very much a worst case situation. And what you see by the colors on the graphs is the comparison of the pressure drop with trunk and branch versus zoned versus parallel. And what we see that in some cases, there's slightly more pressure drop with parallel plumbing. But then in other cases, when you've got the most amount of simultaneity happening, the bars on the far right, there's the most amount of pressure drop with trunk and branch because the one trunk line is trying to supply four different fixtures at the same time, which makes sense. There's also a great publication that was done uh, about 15 years ago, kind of a different test scenario by uh, the same group, National Association of Home Builders Research Lab, where they really compared PEX versus copper flows directly. And this report, as you can see it on the screen here, is also available on the PPI website. And this data has been integrated into the design guide that we've been looking at. And what this data showed, again, with the direct flow to flow, pressure to pressure comparisons of PEX versus copper, is that PEX tubing can be installed in place of copper on a size for size basis. And one of the reasons for that is because it's actually the fixtures that are actually controlling the flow rate. All our fixtures today are low flow fixtures anyway. So even if you supplied your shower with a one inch pipe, you're not gonna get more flow because that shower is limited, flow limited to let's say 2.2 GPM or something like that. And the summary of this testing is highlighted in the bottom of this table here. It says, results of this testing demonstrate that in a typical single family residential plumbing system, both PEX and copper systems will deliver sufficient volumetric flow rates and pressures to the plumbing fixtures when using the same nominal size tubing. So there's no reason whatsoever to upsize PEX when switching from copper. Another study we want to focus on here, uh, and we're getting close to the end, is on surge pressure, which a lot of people refer to as water hammer. 
But if you have a plumbing system with fast closing valves, like an ice maker has a fast closing valve, but the, the valves that cause the most trouble are on a washing machine, a closed washing machine. Those are fast closing valves and they take quite a bit of flow rate. And then all of a sudden the valve closes quickly. Well, the question is how quickly does the pressure in those pipes spike because of the pressure wave when that valve closes so quickly as it does? So NEHB Research Center did this kind of a test back in 2009, where they compared copper, CPVC, and PEX in the exact same plumbing layout with both hot and cold water at different flow rates, and then chopped off the valve, chopped off the flow very quickly with a fast closing valve. Um, and the results are shown in this graph, which is a little hard to read. So we also have it as a table. And again, you can download this report from the PPI website. But this actually demonstrates a big advantage of flexible piping systems, both CPVC and PEX. So for the PEX side, it said when using cold water, the table at the top here, which is 54 degree water, that's really cold. When the fast acting valve closes, the PEX system would actually reduce the surge pressure, the peak pressure, by 30 to 37 percent, depending on exactly which version of PEX was being used. And on the hot side, where the viscosity is a little bit different for hot water than for cold water, and this is with two and a half gallons a minute of flow going through a half inch tubing, PEX system reduced the surge pressure by up to 40 percent. So that is a very significant reduction. So a big advantage of PEX to be able to absorb those surge pressures. And that's all because of the flexibility of the material to be able to expand uh, really quickly in its diameter under surge pressures. And again, that information is also summarized in chapter eight on page 74 of the PEX plumbing design guide. And then finally, there's a research test that was done related to efficient use of uh, plumbing systems about the wait time for hot water. So we talked about this earlier about how much time is it really going to take to get hot water to a distant fixture when you open a faucet, assuming that you're starting with a very cold line and there's hot water back in the water heater. So what they did was in the laboratory, they built two different plumbing systems, one with a piping distance of 60 feet from the water heater to the fixture and another with a piping distance of 100 feet from the water heater to the fixture. And they used thermometers on the, on the outlet simply to measure how long does it take to get hot water. And for the shorter runs, 60 feet long for trunk and branch, and this is all done with PEX plumbing, it would be 53 seconds, almost a minute to get hot water. But with parallel plumbing, which is just a dedicated half inch line, only 37 seconds. So that's a significant reduction of about 30% of uh, the wait time as you're waiting to get hot water. That also means 30% less water is wasted flushing out the line as we're waiting to get hot water to that fixture. And if the piping distance was all the way up to 100 feet long, which is typically the maximum allowed, the reduction for the parallel plumbing system was about 38%. So in other words, you would get 38% faster delivery of hot water with parallel plumbing as compared to trunk and branch or zone plumbing. So that's a big advantage for parallel if that's one of the um, big priorities. Now, of course, this, this was without hot water research. If you were using hot water research, then all of them would perform in the same way. So let's summarize this learning objective. We talked about a lot of different things here in this uh, part of the presentation. So here's kind of some of the summary lessons that we learned here. Uh, number one, trunk and branch will supply one fixture at a higher pressure if there's just one fixture operating, but parallel plumbing will supply a more stable pressure to each fixture when operating simultaneous fixtures because they have a dedicated line to each one in parallel plumbing. Number two, parallel layout delivers hot water faster, especially when starting from cold. And that makes sense because you're flushing out a smaller diameter pipe to get hot water to a fixture when starting from cold. However, the trunk and branch in the zone systems deliver hot water faster during sequential flows. So in other words, you've already got hot water to one sink and now you go to the other sink or the shower. That's what we mean by sequential flow. You'll get hot water faster to the second one if you have trunk and branch or zone systems. So it really kind of depends on how people are using these bathrooms and kitchens and things like that. But the most importantly, uh, I think, thing to focus on is that all three designs delivered sufficient flow and pressure, even with a base pressure of just 40 PSI going into the house and a length to the farthest outlet of 100 feet. And there was no indication whatsoever that pipes should be upsized. So when we say that pipes can be replaced from copper to PEX on a size for size basis, there's a lot of data to prove that and to back that up. So we're almost done here. The final learning objective of this presentation is how to access industry resources. 
and then we can stay for any Q&A and things like that. Before I get into this, though, uh, I do have one more poll question, and this is asking, I am involved with the following types of plumbing system design. So the answers are 50%, one and two family residential. Well, we've certainly covered a lot today that applies to that. 17% multifamily, 17% hotels, condos, apartments. We've covered a lot today that applies to that. And 17% other commercial or institutional projects. And a lot of the information we talked about today applies to commercial and institutional projects as well. And hopefully what everybody is getting the feeling is that uh, there's lots of different ways of using PEX plumbing systems. They're highly adaptable to different types of plumbing projects. So as we get ready to wrap up, let's just take a look at uh, some of the resources we have available to anybody who goes to the website. First of all, if you go to our homepage, it's just going to look like this. Uh, go to plasticpipe.org slash building construction. And that's where we start. And as you see in the red bar across the top, there's a bunch of different drop downs there. If you click on where it says publications and technical publications, this is where you're going to find a list of documents known as statements, recommendations, technical notes, and technical reports. So those various reports that we just talked about from NEHB Research Center are posted in the bottom group here shown as technical reports. That's where you can download those there. But you can also get directly to the PEX Plumbing Design Guide. If we go back to the red bar and you click on where it says publications, there'll be a drop down menu. And one of those drop downs is for the PEX Plumbing Design Guide. At PPI, we actually have a web page dedicated to each of the materials that we represent. So we actually have a web page dedicated just to PEX tubing systems. And on that web page, you'll find links to all the PPI member firms that manufacture and sell PEX systems in North America. So I think we have 15 different members of uh, manufacturing PEX tubing systems for North America. So you can get access to all those firms there. The plastic pipe design calculator, you can get that access to that from our website. Just click on the web page that says calculator and it'll open up a page that looks like this, which gives you some background of the calculator. And then if you just click on the, uh, the symbol or the icon that shows the calculator itself, it'll open the tool. Presentations like this presentation right here, these slide decks, uh, PDF files of the slide decks, are posted to a web page called Presentation Slide Decks. We also have educational videos. Uh, we have two brand new videos. They were just provided, one showing the correct installation of PEX crimp fitting systems, and the other showing correct installation of PEX press fitting systems. And those are relatively short videos, just two minutes long, uh, showing how to assemble those fitting systems correctly. And then we also have a big web page about case studies, uh, plumbing case studies, heating case studies, snow and ice melting, lots of great case studies there. So as we get to the end of this, let's just kind of have two types of technical summaries. When it comes to the sizing of PEX tubing systems, here's a summary of all the stuff we said today. Number one, PEX tubing can be sized the same as copper tubing in almost every case. And that's because the PEX tubing dimensions are very close to copper tubing. The outside diameter is identical, but the wall's a bit thicker. Here's the example for the half inch. The smooth interior surface of PEX provides superior flow through its entire life because it's not going to get a mineral buildup. The fact that we can eliminate most elbows and many fittings reduces the overall system pressure loss because you don't have pressure loss through fittings as well. And in fact, the flow calculations for PEX use a C factor of 150 when you're using the uh, Darcy Weisbach equation or Hazen Williams equations for flow calculations. And then one other thing, just to remind everybody again, when doing your pressure drop calculations, use the uh, PPI calculator at plasticpipecalculator.com or access it through the PPI webpage to do really quick calculations of what the pressure drop will be. Uh, and here's a result right here. Going back to our learning objectives. So we did number four, five, and six today. If you missed the first part of this, again, go back to our website and click on the uh, webpage that says um, record the webinars and you'll be able to watch that recording of part one that was given back in July. Another part of our conclusion is just to remind you all that by applying proper design techniques, the PEX plumbing systems will deliver the optimum com combination of performance, efficiency, cost, and longevity. And again, we recommend you to uh, download this book if you haven't done it already. And uh, yeah, please explore all the great information inside this design guide. It's quite helpful. That brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much to everybody for joining us here today. And of course, all of the PPI member firms involved with the manufacturing of PEC systems are extremely helpful uh, with customers using their materials and can provide some pretty good design assistance and uh, material selection and uh, code interpretations and things like that as well. So in a lot of cases, working directly with our members 
is the best way to go because they're very much experts in uh, in this business as well.